Now, if you enjoy going to nightclubs and you like your music loud, beware, because you could be putting your ears at risk. Because research here in the UK has found that many clubs play music above the recommended safe levels and six hours of exposure could damage your hearing for life. Frightening. Uh, One possible consequence is tinnitus, a constant ringing noise in your ears. Now, if you want to know what it's like, just have a listen to Matthew. He's had it for 20 years and we've mixed the ringing sound he hears into the interview. You'll never hear silence again. That's my reality with tinnitus, is that when I go into a very quiet room, if I'm sitting in a wood, if I'm in, surrounded by nature and there's no noise around, when I try and really enjoy that sense of silence, suddenly I become aware of the ringing. And the more I try and focus on getting the silence, the more the ringing, the louder the ringing becomes. One of the dangers with tinnitus is that it's linked to hearing loss. I don't want to go deaf. I don't want to be deaf when I'm old. Part of my tinnitus was certainly caused by going to nightclubs and listening to music that's too loud. It's really important to take care of your hearing. You know, learning techniques to cope once you've already done the damage is one thing, but it's far better to do prevention than the cure. I know lots of people that have got tinnitus that have had it, that have suffered from it, Uh, people that have certainly had hearing loss from going to nightclubs and going to raves uh, and listening to music far too loud for far too long. If you think about your tinnitus and it's quiet in the room, the tinnitus gets louder and louder and louder until it sounds as though you have a nightclub going on inside your head. That is impossible to go to sleep with. So unless you find a way to cope with that, unless you find a way to ignore the tinnitus, you won't get to sleep. And it's the highest pitched squeal that I can hear. So my tinnitus is defined by the most high pitched noise. And it's a single tone, it doesn't stop, uh, and it gets louder and louder the more that I concentrate on it. Uh, And if I concentrate on it and I don't go through my normal periods of of ignoring it, uh, it gets louder and louder until it's totally deafening. I remember the night that it started, I was 18, I was lying in bed, I was hearing silence, and then literally suddenly, like a switch turned on inside my head, I started hearing a ringing. Then the more I thought about it, the more I concentrated it, the louder it got, and the more panicked I got. Uh, And the only way I could deal with it in those first few weeks was to sleep at night with the radio on. I couldn't have silence, because if I had the the distracting noise of external noise, in particular music or radio, it brought the tinnitus down and I could learn to ignore it. And then I realised slowly that actually what I could do is is ignore it inside my own head that I didn't need that external stimulus of a radio or music, that I could just think about other things. And uh, and eventually I learned to control it in that way. My tinnitus is a thing that tends to come up when there's silence. And, and that for me is probably the, the biggest issue, that I don't get to hear silence anymore. Hmm. We're talking about about People we know have got it, and mm. it's really, really difficult uh, to live with. Um, the World Health Organization believes up to a billion young people worldwide could be at risk of damaging their hearing. Uh, so how do we actually know if music is being played too loud? Well, here's some words of advice from Matthew Williams. He's chief audiologist at the London Tinnitus Clinic. The best way to try and gauge this is using something called the Lombard effect, which is when you're in an environment whereby you'd have to elevate your own voice in order to be heard. So if you're having to shout in order to to make yourself heard, then on the basis of probability, the noise levels within the environment are probably too high. Other things that you'll notice are when you've moved out of the environment, if you, you feel that your hearing is muffled, that's a sure sign that the environment is is too loud and you should not repeat uh, that experience. The third thing is is that if you actually have pre-existing tinnitus and you notice that the tinnitus elevates in salience or volume after the noise exposure, then again that's a sign that the environment is in fact dangerous. But finally, if you're not able to hear what other people are saying when they're a meter or less away from you in terms of distance, then again that's, that's probably a danger sign. 
There you go. So now you know. It'd be very interesting to hear if any of our listeners uh, suffer from that condition. The number, if you'd like to share your views on that or anything else on the program, 447786 20 50 85. This is Newsday. We'll be having more details.